Okay, that's great. Thank you ever so much for that. Um, okay, so uh, this afternoon we have uh, two sessions. Uh, the first is what we talk about when we talk about virtual learning environments. Uh, and it's a talk from Michael Flavin, um, who is the uh, Senior Lecturer in Global Education at King's College. Uh, and also the author of uh, what looks like a really interesting book, Reimagining Technology Enhanced Learning, Critical Perspectives on Disruptive Innovation. Um, Michael's going to talk about um, uh, research into virtual learning environments uh, and I think it's fair enough to call it a sort of a, a meta-analysis uh, re reviewing uh, quite a considerable amount of research on uh, virtual learning environments and some uh, really interesting findings around uh, what we seem to talk about a lot uh, and perhaps a lot of the, uh, the conversations and discussions and research that uh, goes perhaps a little unnoticed as well. Um, and then after that, we've got a talk from uh, Joe Probert from uh, Vivox and David Reed, who is a professor of uh, chemistry at the uh, University of Southampton. Uh, and they're going to talk about uh, the Vivox, uh, the, the tool, both from a perspective of a supplier and how they've responded to um, the, the COVID crisis, uh, and also from a, a user's perspective as well. So two really interesting talks. Anyway, uh, there'll be uh, about talks for, for about kind of 15, 20 minutes or so, and there'll be an opportunity for Q&A afterwards. So if you do have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat uh, and we'll uh, field those at the end of the session. But I shall get out of the way now and uh, hand over to Michael. Thanks, Michael. No, thank you. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, I'm from King's College London, and the opening picture there is a shot of one of our buildings on the Strand campus. It's Bush House. At least I think it is. I haven't actually been there since March, but I'm working on the assumption that it's still there. So this is a report on some research I undertook. I undertook it with an undergraduate student. We have a scheme at King's whereby undergraduate students in the summer months can be research assistants uh, alongside members of staff. So the co-author of this research was uh, Aditi Bandari. And the aim of the research was to take a look at articles that had been published on virtual learning environments over a five year period. And we came up with a uh, hundred peer reviewed academic journal articles. It was just coincidence that it came to that round number. And the idea was to have a look at what was being researched. And equally therefore, and this is where we felt the research opportunity lay, to identify areas that had been underexplored in research on virtual learning environments and thereby to create use value because we could kind of say look you know here's areas that aren't being explored so for other researchers you may find this kind of a fertile line of inquiry so our specific research questions that we started out with is what's the pattern of academic journal articles on vles over a five-year period what can we deduce from that and that critical point about what areas are underexplored and therefore perhaps pointing the way for a next stage of research to undertake. As for why the virtual learning environment, well, it's because of just how established it is. Uh, fads come and go, you know, technology products, goods and services come and go, yet over the full generation that we've had VL, uh, technology enhanced learning for now, the VLE is fully established. Uh, those two studies from recent years are both UK based, but they're from very large data sets. And they do indicate that this is a technology that gets used. It gets used on a daily basis. So really, I thought, well, this is probably technology enhanced learning's greatest hit. Um, other things, Second Life, MOOCs, you know, interest peaks and interest falls away. But this is there, it's steadfast and it's an established part of what we do. So when we started this research, and we really did start from scratch, one of the things I thought was this is great, no one will have thought of doing this before. Wrong. When we started doing the literature search, we found several studies so one of the earliest we found from 2006 was looked at articles published in the British Journal of Educational Technology. And a comment in that research that we kind of thought, OK, that, that's interesting. It's not something we'd thought of. It was, if you like, a kind of politicised reading of the research. 
because that 2006 survey found that the vast majority of the articles were from Western countries or overseas universities that were very Western influenced. Second study we found from 2009, which went with a big data set over a longer period, divided its research into three categories. So the macro level, which was looking at national education systems or theory driven, a mezzo level looking at how VLEs were administered and, and managed within an institution, and the micro level of learning and teaching. Um, and we borrowed those categories and used them for our study because they were a good way of breaking down our sample into different levels that we could then analyze. And they found that most of their sample came from a small number of countries. Similarly, a 2012 survey again found that the most prolific countries for e-learning research it was tending to be concentrated. And then a study of 2015 with again a large data set, but and over a longer period, found that the most common research method was quantitative analysis. And finally, a paper published this year surveyed metaphors used to describe VLEs over a 15 year period. So there was previous research and to return to that first one, there was that angle we hadn't thought of before, which I suppose we can start to think of, or we start to thought of as the politics of virtual learning environments, recognizing that really they tend to emerge from, well, affluent countries, uh, Moodle, Blackboard, Sake, WebCT, and a quote we found from an article of 2018 was, making the point, look, these are commercial products sold by rival vendors. What is this doing to education? And are we looking at homogenized forms of virtual learning? So although we started out with research questions, our early literature search sparked different ideas that then we carried with us as we went through the research. The next few slides are all then a survey of the data we found in our research. So to start with, you'll see that with one exception, there was a reasonably similar numbers of articles being published each year. Now, we don't know whether 2014 was an outlier or whether if we look before 2014 or after 2018, we'd have found more data and a, a, a more generalized pattern. But with the exception of 2014, there seemed to be a reasonably consistent level of interest in the virtual learning environment as a research subject. Secondly, we looked at the distribution of scholarship. Sorry, this, uh, depending on your screen size, this may be quite small. But the UK was the main source of these papers. And what we did was we took the affiliation of the first author or where the content of the article made it clear what the context was where the research was being done we used that um spain featured highly which didn't seem to be the case in previous studies and some other countries such as the usa or germany or china were less highly represented but we could say in common with previous studies of this kind that there were concentrations of research in this space we then took the three categories of macro, looking either at national systems or theory-driven research, mezzo, looking at how VLEs are managed and administered, often in an institutional context, and then the micro level of learning and teaching. Quite often these were case studies of a VLE on a particular course. And certainly, and this is in common with pre previous research in this space, we found that the majority of the research was on that micro level often individual case studies of learning and teaching with a VLE. We also found that the research was heavily weighted towards students. As you can see, nearly 60% of the sample were articles about students, with another 18 being about students and instructors. I mean, interestingly there is just how underrepresented instructors are in VLE research over the period. Uh, I mean, an important stakeholder in using VLEs for learning and teaching. Yet clearly this seemed to be a space that was underrepresented. This was a little surprising to us 
we looked at what brand of VLE was used in the research and found that in 40% of cases, it didn't specify what brand of VLE was used. Why we found this a little bit odd is that, you know, the VLE is a substantial institutional investment. Now, it may be the case, and in common with many of the attendees here, I've used many different brands of VLE, but have tended to find them more conspicuous by their similarities than by their differences, which brings up that whole subtext of, is this an homogenized product? But it was one of the things that struck us as quite interesting was just how many of these studies didn't specify which one had been used. The next thing we looked at was, well, what journals do these pieces of research feature in? And you'll see there the left column is simply a number count of the journals in which the most articles featured. But in the right hand, what we did was compare those statistics with the Scamago ranking. In case you're not familiar with it, uh, Scamago league tables rank journals in league table format and their metric is both the number of citations and the prestige of the outlets in which those citations feature. And what we found therefore was basically no correlation between the articles getting published and the prestige of the journal. What we also saw was that the research was heavily weighted towards specialist journals around learning technology. This could be unremarkable. Uh, people producing their research on some aspect of technology enhanced learning may simply seek an outlet in a technology enhanced learning journal. But nonetheless, the real absence of articles appearing in education journals more widely implied that for all of its being a ubiquitous technology, it might be quite a niche research interest. Another thing we found that surprised us a little was just, um, I mean, sorry, this is the quantitative, um, this was the research broken down by method, research method, and this was replicating previous studies. The, the majority of the research, or most of the research was quantitative, less qualitative, a bit mixed methods, and a few papers with no original data. But this one surprised us a little, is how few of the papers we looked at from a sample of 100 actually had a theoretical lens through which to consider their findings. We can see the most common one in 9% of papers was the technology acceptance model, which kind of makes sense because that theory is about ease of use of technologies being related to adoption. So we could see how that would relate to the VLE about how quick and easy users find it. Similarly, the second category down, community of practice, which is a centripetal theory of learning that argues learners move from the periphery to the center of learning communities over time. And again, we could see how that made sense that from the kind of first exposure to virtual learning environments through to participating, yep, that worked but it was surprising there were only uh, three papers out of 100. Activity theory, which is basically has three nodes of the human subject, the object they wish to attain, and the tool in the middle, we could see how the VLE was suited to that. And a couple of papers specified they were using grounded theories, generating categories out the data. But the really noteworthy point there was just how few papers on VLEs approach them from an explicitly theoretical lens. So here's a summary. Most of the research on VLEs so over the five year period based on a sample of 100 papers, it was quantitative, focused on students, on the micro level of learning and teaching. We found from 2011, a research paper that was basically saying, look, most of the research on technology enhanced learning over the past 10 years hasn't been from a theoretical perspective. Well, our research suggests that the 10 years we've just had have pretty much followed the same pattern as far as research on VLE specifically goes. And then we had that political subtext, which we were starting to just stay out of the data. A really interesting paper from Brazil in 2020 about the technology products that simply get exported to other countries without 
recognition of the particular conditions of learning in those contexts um, really just sold as this will solve everything, marketed aggressively. And we can start to make the more politically controversial argument of a form of digital colonialism emerging. And so there's space for people who might be interested in doing research on virtual learning environments, space for more theory, space for more qualitative studies. You think that it would lend itself well to content analysis, looking at contributions. And there's more space for research focusing on instructors. And really, it took us to an odd place and not a satisfactory one, because if the VLE really is technology enhanced learning's greatest hits, there's things to think about. We found this conference paper from 2015 and found it very difficult to disagree with it. The VLEs are not contextualized. They're more likely to be homogenized. They don't factor in the social context to a sufficient extent. So really, if this is the best we've got to show from 25 years of technology enhanced learning, have we really achieved all that much? And on that decidedly cheerful note, I'm very happy to keep thinking and researching and working in this area and to network with others. My email address at King's is there. My Twitter address is there, though I'm pretty inactive on Twitter. And my LinkedIn address is there. I do make more use of LinkedIn. As stated at the beginning, uh, my new book came out last month, published by Paul Grave Macmillan, and it is the perfect stocking filler, albeit for someone you don't like very much. Uh, for what it's worth, it uses disruptive innovation theory as a lens through which to analyze technology enhanced learning in higher education. Those are the references I've used in this presentation. And that's a shot of King's, the rear of King's Strand campus from the other side of Waterloo Bridge. And who knows, in 2021, I may even get to go back there. Thank you very much indeed for listening. I'm very happy to keep chatting.